So today we will be reading verse 48 from Shishi Vilapa Kusumanjali. O Devi, Goddess, when will I most affectionately bring the remnants from Krishna's lotus-like mouth that were given to me by Dhanishta before you. O Devi, Goddess, when will I most affectionately bring the remnants from Krishna's lotus-like mouth that were given to me by Dhanishta before you. How wonderful is Sri Raghunath's devotional service in full Swarupavish. On Swamini's order, Tulasi has gone to Nandishwara to serve Shama Sundara her own cooked dishes there. After Shama Sundara has eaten, Mother Jashoda lovingly gives some of his sweet remnants to Tulasi so that she can bring them back to Swamini. Dhanishta had secretly mixed some of Krishna's Adharamrita, lip nectar, or food remnants, in it. Shri Krishna knew what Dhanishta wanted, so while giving her a hint with his eyes, he spat some food out as if he did not like it. Danishta picked that food up and mixed it with the sweets that Jashoda has reserved for Shiradika. Danishta is responsible for all devotional services at Nandishwara, as is Kundalata. Both of them are very attached to the loving couple. They know what is on their minds and they render their services in secret, unnoticed by others. All this can only be understood by unfolding one's swarup. We can stop here a little bit and try to enter a little deeper in the words, but also in the commentaries of Ananta Das Babaji. <clears throat> so th those devotees who are very familiar with Parakya Bhava, they can notice that these words, very, it, although it's very short, is full of deep, hidden meaning and explains how Parakya above forbidden love between Radha and Mohan are going on and how different devotees serve they, their forbidden love, their Parakya above. In the words, if you look at the words, it is said, O Devi, when will I most affectionately bring the remnants from Krishna's lotus mouth 
Excuse me, Spanish no se escucha. Oh. Please, Radha Mohan. Uh, Radha Chalan. Make escucha. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what does mean escucha. But Spanish is here. I, I Listening. Don't... They they couldn't. Li they cannot listen. I think. Or doesn't work. Pinker is translating or because your mic is switch off. Of course, they couldn't listen to her. Oh, then. Rade, <laughs> rade, my dear sister. <laughs> yes, sometimes it happens. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Is it okay now? All right. Sí. Huh? Rade, rade. Yes. Is it okay? Yes. Thank you, Mata. Thank you. We can continue now. So we can see here that Tulsi Manjari is playing the role of a messenger. Very confidential duty messenger. First, she was she was bringing all cook delicious preparations, which personally Radharani made. She brought to Nandishwar to Krishna, and in that way, she was sending in her heart, through her heart and through her eyes, all Radhika's emotions to her beloved Mohan. This is real delicious preparation. Because when Krishna sees Manjari Duti, messenger, he can immediately feel and sees Radhika's appearance, Radhika's emotions, Radhika's brighten aura, because on Manjari's heart everything is impressed so deeply. But only Krishna can see that in Andishwar. All other elder gopis and gopas, they don't see this secret message which Radhika is sending to her beloved through her maid servant, which is most confidential. And now we have words when Manjari is going back to Radharani. And she is doing the same thing. She is sending Krishna's message through his loving remnants to Radharani. And these loving remnants which he ate are like our Gurudev is saying, is a flying kisses. <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Chaitanya Charitamrita was talking about the glories of this kind of Adharamrita. And everyone who is enough sensitive, he immediately could catch the point that behind these remnants is actually the hidden parakya kisses. And this is the most relishable for those 
were deeply absorbed in Madhuri above. And here we can see how is important the role of Manjaris. That these flying kisses, flying uh, emotions between Radha and Mohan can go toward one between them. And Manjari is the third person who is bringing this delicious flying hidden kisses in the form of delicious food. Yeah. When someone is taking some, uh, first of all, when someone is cooking for beloved, automatically all consciousness, all feelings from the heart are infused in the process of cooking and finally in the result of cooking. This is normal. But when that person who tries to eat this preparation, he feels consciousness and emotions of beloved. And what he is doing? He is completely absorbed in these loving emotions. And in the moment when he touches with the lips this delicious food, with tongue, with feet, what he is giving? He is giving the kisses, very confidential kisses and varieties of kisses. Sometimes kisses just kiss. Formal kiss. You know, in the air, left and right. Sometimes kiss is very deep. And sometimes kiss is so intoxicated. And Radha and Mohan, in their exchange of kisses, Actually, they want to intoxicate each other. And knowing that, Manjaris are happy to do their duty, seva. So this is the sign of very confidential relation and close relationship. Because Radhika is not giving to everyone preparations to bring to Krishna and Krishna is not giving to everyone preparations, his remnants to again back, bring back to Radharani. We can see here then it's mentioned Danishta and Kundalata. But they are, they are gopis, they are sakis in their natural staiba, they are sakis. But they are always in the mood of helping Radha and Krishna to exchange their love. So they are using their cleverness, their intelligence, how to mix this remnants and gave to Manjari to bring back to Radhik. So this, why we are talking about this, because this is the perfect subject for meditation. Mm. It's so natural. Everyone can stop his mind 10 minutes, 5 minutes, and just think about this beautiful scene, top secret scene. Udawaji, you want to share something? <laughs> Jai Shri Radhe, Jai Guru Jai. Radhe, Jai Jai Nanda. Yeah. I'm so happy 
the Yogaranga that you describe this in in the terms of a message. I agree. But what language is the message in? It's the language of the message is ras, feeling, taste, from mouth to, to mouth. And in the, um, in the West, in Western education, at least in my education, we learn that the highest language is logic and reasoning. And that emotional expression comes second. But here in Bhakti, we learn that the highest language is Ras, is the language of Ras, of flavor, of taste. So this is also why the food is so important, because we have so much difficulty with words, don't we? We have so much difficulty in the West to, to communicate our love to loved one or to friends. So the best way to communicate is to cook. <laughs> you cook a nice meal for the one you love, and there's no words necessary. So this cooking uh, metaphor is so very lovely here. Radhe. Radhe, thank you very much. So nice. Radhika is cooking Krishna's heart, actually. Uh, rasa, like you say, Rasavati. She is cooking. She is expert in cooking. And she is so expert in cooking, like our Udavaji said, actually, that Krishna doesn't want to eat any other food. She is not so... He is not so enthusiastic. Mother has to feed him. You have to take it. You have to take it. Open your eyes, you know, because, because this is motherly exchange. Mother always has to do some endeavor for his child. But here, Radhika, she doesn't have to take any endeavor to cook Krishna's heart. She just puts Mahabhava, Madanakya Mahabhava, in the delicious food. And also, she is doing one more thing. She is infusing the hearts of Madanakya Mahabhava to Manjari. But Manjari doesn't enjoy that Madanakya Mahabhava but rather is a messenger of Radhika Smahdana Mahabhav through her ears, eyes, sorry, which are meant for Krishna's pleasure. If Radhika puts Madanakya Mahabhav in the eyes, in the heart of gopis, they cannot be a proper messengers. They will use for themselves. <laughs> so we can see how unique position of King Karis is. Most confidential. And this is the reason why this kind of manjari, Bhav Sadhana, is the most difficult. It's complete keval, complete, pure, 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 pure. Can you imagine Manjari is reflecting? She is infused with all Radhika's emotions which she wants to give to Mohan. And she is bringing to him. She is not enjoying to herself. And he, her enjoyment is to deliver this food and Mother Nakya Mahabhav in, in this food to Radhika's lover and to see him, how he is losing himself. This is the perfection of Seva.
So Rasami was reading one very nice sentence. How Danishta and uh, Kundalata, they know what is in the minds of Yuga Lakishore. This is the greatest secret in the service, in devotional service. To feel the heart of Ishtadev. To feel the mind of Ishtadev. To feel the senses of Ishtadev. To feel the heart of Ishtadev. And different devotees are crying, are very eager actually for that feeling. Because they know if I buy some indescribable creeper, receive this feeling of my Ishtadev, I can become expert in service. This is their eagerness. They are eager for the feelings of Ishtadev. And how they are receiving these feelings from, in our case, Radhika? From Radhika's closest, most intimate maidservants. They are bringing to Krishna these Mahabha feelings, but also they are radiating to us towards us, neophytes, beginners, selecas. Then you have to say something, or maybe later, or... It, I, I don't understand. Can you hear? Uh, yes, please. <clears throat> so... So Gauranga Sundaraji and Uttavaji explained very nicely. And uh, here, uh, Tulashi Manjari bring remnants of uh, actually Adaramurita to, to Swamini. At that time, Swamini or even Krishna seeing the Tulashi Manjari's Face, especially I. What is the intention of Radhika? Because Manjari has a kind of picture in, in her eye or feeling in her eyes. So Krishna sees Manjari's face, especially eyes. Krishna could understand what is Radhika's feeling. And Radhika is waiting for the news of Nandishwara. And they immediately see Manjari's face, especially eyes. Then Radhika could, could understand what's going on. Because like Manjari eyes like a picture, like picture. So he could, you know, and they also feeling expression there. So Radhika was seeing the Manjari Trashi eyes and face she could understand she feel it this is also oneness also goranga sundara explain this madanakya mahababa i was wondering oh this is madanakya mahababa actually true because madanakya mahababa is one nature of madanakya mahababa is Meeting in separation and separation in meeting. So it looks like physically Radhika was away from Krishna because Radhika was saying Java most of the time and, and uh, Krishna is saying Nandishwara, Nandagam. So they are physically separating. But through the Agaramurita, flying kiss, they are meeting. So this is very nicely explained, Gauranga Sundara. 
And uh, so this is feeling in separation. Also, I felt Radhika was not tasting this other murita. Just seeing and touching and then the smelling all five senses using like looks like like five arrow of Krishna. Then Radhika become intoxicated. And Manjari also could feel this one. That's also very very interesting point. Another point is uh, actually Kundarata and uh, Danishta is supposed to Krishna's gopi. They are thinking Krishna's pleasure mainly, but this also some kind of parakia. But uh, also they want to please Radhika. Because to please Radhika, please Krishna. So this is every, say, we could understand this Danishta and Kundarata, they also want to please Radhika through Krishna, or through Krishna to please Radhika. This is every Saki and Gopi and Manjari cooperating to, to, to fulfill the desire of Yuga Rakisho. That's also very good meditation. It's very beautiful meditation, Jayanandaji. Thank you very much for this point, because it's very clearly is showing that each devotee has his own staiba. And through his own Staibhav, he is perfectly serving. Without Staibhav, he cannot perfectly serve. So only Staibhav is the most important thing because then devotees can cooperate. Without Staibhav, no one can co cooperate. Even when Staibhavas are different, like Jayanandaji Maharaj said here, very nicely. Because everyone is situated in his natural position. He is completely natural and he can cooperate with others for the pleasure of Radha Mohan. But if the persons are not in Staibhav, in their own individual identification, and relationship, they always make a mess. You, we can see here in the material world also, good companies are good because people have similar mentality, similar, similar ideas, and they are situated very well. And because of that, they can cooperate. And so many businesses were fell down. Although the individuals were very, very intelligent, very qualified, but they couldn't cooperate because they didn't have the same goal. And when Someone who is a newcomer comes in this kind of company where everyone has the same goal. He immediately catch the same wood. He doesn't have to be so qualified. Just to be in the association of those who are one point in, in their goal. And slowly and surely, he is learning, he is feeling how to work, how to act, and how to cooperate with others. Very similar thing is here in the spiritual realm. I like Jayanadaji very nicely pointed out, actually. In Andishwar, we can see here, everyone somehow is serving loving parakya affairs between Radha and Mohan. But they are successful in that because they are fixed in their own stai bhava. Otherwise, it will not be possible. 
Da de, sorry. All this can only be understood by unfolding one's swarup. A person who is absorbed in bodily consciousness is not qualified to render these confidential services to the Sri Yugala. How deeply Sri Dasa Goswami is absorbed in his Swarup. How vividly he experiences these services. Can the sadaka continue when he does not even experience a little of this kind of devotional service? Please repeat this sentence again. Can the sadaka continue when he does not even experience a little of this kind? Of devotional service. Now question is arising. How Sadaka, who is a beginner, who is a neophyte, can have this kind of experience, little drop of this kind of experience at all? How Sadaka, who is conditioned so strongly with bodily conception of life, can relish this kind of devotional service just a little. In one sense, it's not possible. But there is a hope. If he connect his feelings and heart with those who are swimming, and diving in this ocean of pastimes, of this ocean of devotional service, he can feel their feelings. This is Sadhana Bhakti. I'm trying. This is my practice. I'm trying to connect my heart, mind, desire with the heart, mind, desires of pure devotees. I understand that I'm conditioned. I understand my situation. But I want to overcome And at the same time, I know that it's not possible by my own endeavor. It can be confusing for materialistic way of thinking, like Kudavaji was taking. We were always thinking we need explanations, words, and so on. Yes, this is... But Acharyas are giving the way that by listening and feelings what we are listening of the words of Acharyas, their vivid vision slowly but surely will be infused first in the form of feelings, attachment, in the heart of Sadaka devotees. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarve Shastra Khoi. Association of Sadhus, it means to receive their feelings, their love for Radharani. If we can make it, then we have real association of sadhus.
I think that this is the greatest gift of our Acharyas. But the problem is, like Udavaji said, we are used to think, to feel completely on the opposite way. And now we have to accept. The process of acceptance is very important. To accept that by listening and thinking about the words of Acharyas, their emotions towards Radha Mohan will penetrate deeply in our heart and soften it, melt it, and then we will be able to relish the drops of devotion cells. This is my understanding, and honestly to say, I'm trying to practice it as much as I can, although it is, I'm very useless, but what to do? Janadiji, yes, I saw you. Uh, so, what I'm saying that I explained very nicely, I also felt uh, like our heart is like a mirror. So, Sadhu's feeling, Sadhu's kind of love, trauma, kind of reflect in our heart. In other words, from Radhika's lotus, lotus feet, toenail emanate some, some lightning, penetrate through Acharya's heart to, into our heart. Today is Guru Dev, so I want to share what Guru Dev said today. <laughs> so, uh, in Russian class, um, some devotee is glorified, Radha Kunda, Shamba Kunda, and uh, killing Arisa Sunda. Then, Guru Dev saying, actually, in our heart, Arista Sura, our ego, our like uh, material desire, and that Guru Dev saying, after killing Arista Sura, Radha Kunda, Shama Kunda manifest. <laughs> so Guru Dev saying, I, this is Guru Dev, I went to Radha Kunda, Shama Kunda, but I cannot see Ra real Radha Kunda, Shama Kunda. Why? Because in our heart, Arisa Sura is still there. That's Guru Dev, but Guru Dev saying, because of his humbleness, teaching us. So, <laughs> we are really felt, oh my God, actually, we have so much Aristasura in our heart. So, therefore, we went to Radha Kunda, Shama Kunda, but we cannot see the other one. But still, we have hope. Because even Rupa Gosam is saying, I feel so much unqualified. But Radhika's mercy is unlimited. Goranga Mahaprabhu's mercy is so great. He does not care, or she does not care who is qualified, who is not qualified. So this is in this Kariyuga. We could take advantage of this Goranga Mahaprabhu, the greatest mercy, Radhika's mercy. I also, I feel I'm so unqualified. But uh, I cannot give up hope. Because even Rupa Goswami also praying to like this. And uh, we we have uh, our Guru Dev, who is the uh, Dasi of Radhika. 
And、uh, we believe Nita is so merciful. And Goranga Mahaprabhu also merciful. So I feel only we could do by the mercy, Kuripa. Last,、uh, a few days ago, maybe many days ago,、uh, in the class, Radha Ramancharan Baba's lecture、uh, was Kuripa come from Kuripa. Some people think, no, from Sadhana, Kuripa is coming. But, but the Baba said, no. From Kuripa, we could do Sadhana. Because if some cause there, this is not Kuripa. <laughs> cause means, Kuripa means without cause. So this is good day, but saying, pointing out our Arista Sura. And then, oh my God, this is bhajan to, to, to meditate and to, to this lila kata. And then we try to check ourselves, not to check others, check ourselves. Oh, this is my demon there, still there. My still m a t e r i a l is there. So this is Guru Dev saying, this very personal thing. We are sadhana is our mind, which way we are going. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> wow, this is so sorry. This is maybe a little bit maybe divided, but、uh, I try to share good things with us. That's it. Thank you. Some sound, very strange sound is coming. I don't know if you are, if you hear. Oh. Okay, maybe translations there in the basement or? No, it's, a, it's yes, some translation in the basement, and also fan is working. Quite、ah, a little、okay. bit noisy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, okay, no problem. Just to clarify confusion. <laughs> Udawaji, you want to share and add something which comes to you on this? Subject or someone else, I don't know, I can't not see. Okay, Rasumi, please. No, just sorry, I, I did something come, come into, my, into my heart. That you, you know, emotions. Radio waves cannot travel through walls, but feelings can travel through walls. Feelings can travel through iron walls, concrete walls. I can be in love with someone who's on the moon. There's no place and there's no space that can stop my feelings from communicating. This is, I think, the extension of what you're saying, Garanga, about.、Um, About communication, about messages. We have this idea that to, to feel love, we need to be present with the physical object of our love. And it's not the case. We just need to be present with a spiritual object of our love. That's enough to love. That's all. Thank you very much. Love. In love, there is no boundaries, no blockages. And especially in a spiritual transcendental love. Because Baba is saying, all this can only be understood by awakening one's Swarup. So when devotee is situated in his Swarup, His Swarup is clear in his consciousness, then he is actually situated in his natural transcendental platform, level, completely above all material considerations, gunas, 
Uh, and this is a position which we are hankering for. But I feel like it's not, I feel like it's not black and white. It's not, you're totally in Svarup or you're nowhere. I feel like it's gradual. So that feeling the presence of a little bit of love will give us a little bit of insight. And as the love grows, the insight will grow. So I believe that anyone who's made it to the Zoom class already has a drop of the love flowing, have a taste of their own Svarup, and are on their way, and have then the hope that we talk about so much to, to be able to go higher. Yes, this is very important to understand like what Sudhavaji said, because the prema is starting from the very, very, very beginning of Sharada. And all devotees who comes in under the influence of prema, they are starting from Sharada and slowly going on a different steps and like Udavaji gave us encouragement that also in, on our level, some awakening of Swarup, desirable relationship, some desire for Radharani appears already in our heart. Otherwise, we will not be here. And this is like Jayanandaji said, this is Kripa. Causeless Kripa. And we are reading here Vilapa Kusumanjali. And this is also Kripa. We are coming in the touch of the Mahavanis of Rasik devotees. Janadaji? Mike? One second, yes. So. So this is, a, I want to say one story to hope to, 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 to awaken Swarupa, some hope maybe. I hope that story. My, my friend, who is a disciple of Guru Dev's Goto Brother disciple, at from beginning, <coughs> he does not have understand Swarupa. But uh, he was thinking, oh, I like this personality. And then he was he started meditating. Sat Manjari. <coughs> and and day, day by day he was he was meditating to 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 serve his his own you know kind of thinking swarup. They are amazingly slowly, slowly he has uh, attained Rashka Vaishnava, who is Radha this Baba's disciple. And then that Guru Dev showed him the And then, and then. I, you know, in this class, I cannot describe it so much, but, uh, you know, so, so what I want to say is just meditation. Radharani could understand our feeling, our desire. Then Radhika, internal potency, bring us to certain place, certain Rashka Vaishnava. And then through the mercy of Rashka Vaishnava, so we, we could slowly, slowly attain Swarupa and Swarupa city. 
So therefore, this Radha Darshan's uh, this Sangha is very valuable because uh, we start meditating even a little bit. And slowly, slowly, then this meditation will condense. Then Radhika bring us to Rashika Vaishnava and then to, to go, go, go forward to, to attain Swarupa Swarupa City. So I had one devote my friend's story. I was completely amazed. And uh, so this is, you know, we don't need to lose hope. We, sh we should have hope. And uh, even though we don't realize it, but we try to feel and meditate. That is uh, my humble feeling and uh, experience. Thank you, Jayanandaji. Yeah, it was very nice. In this life of that devotee, it very clearly explains how the process is going on. First desire appears by the Kripa. I want to become Radha's maidservant. I don't know details. I don't know my name. I don't know anything. But my strong desire is to be in the association of Shimata Radharani like her maid servants. And when this Hladini Shakti, or we can say Radharani in the form of Guru Shakti, sees sincerity in the heart of devotee, her Kripa is acting immediately that she is bringing that devotee in close association of Rasik Vaishnava, who is in accomplished in his Swarup and who can help this neophyte who just had desire to become Radharani's maid servant. So to meet the Rasik devotee who can help us to advance more and more and more is indescribable Kripa. And we should really appreciate this gift, the value of that gift which we receive. Some devotees, I will just say something more. Some devotees in this lifetime, from the very beginning of their lives, when they are very young, they have strong Sukritis. And from the beginning of their life, they are immediately attracted to Vrindavan, to Radha Mohan, and to their own Staiba, because they have strong Sukritis from previous lives. And some devotees, like in my case, which don't have so much Sukritis, these deep impressions from previous lives, they need a little time. Yes. It was preparation time for me. And then, by the Kripa, again, happened the same thing. Rasik devotee appear in our life. So I remember when I was asking my Gurudev why I, why I was spent, uh, why I spent so many years, decades, and I didn't met you. I was wasting the time. 
it was completely useless. And he said, no, you are wrong. It was not wasting the time. It was preparation time of yours. So I said, okay, okay, now I'm a little relieved. It's much more easier now to digest it. But this is, we can see our kids who are born in Vaishnava families. They already have Socrates. They already come in Vrindavan. They already unknowingly even are attracted to Radha Mohan, Gurudev, Rasik devotees, and so on. And for some of us who doesn't have such a deep Socrates, we come in Vrindavan, but nothing is happening. We come in association of Rasik devotee, again nothing is happening. We need time to collect sufficient amount of Socrates, like a bank account, you know. We have to collect some sufficient amount and then it will start to bring beautiful results in the form of deeper association with Rasik devotees. Thank you, everyone. Rasami. Uh, sorry, one question is, Oh, why we need Sukriti from Barbara Stavets? Okay. Janandaji, you want to? Uh, I just want to, why, if we depend on Kripa, we need Sukriti? Tinker is asking. Why, if we depend on Kripa, we need Sukriti. Kinkar is asking, right? Sukritis are Kripa. Without mercy, we cannot. have enough Sukritis, and why we need Sukritis? Because Sukritis are very specific. There's many kinds of Sukritis. And this specific devotional Sukritis, it's not Dharmic Sukritis, it's devotional Sukritis are something which has to be received. Jiva, in the pure form, doesn't have such kind of Sukritis. And this kind of Sukritis are important to be received according to our desire of devotional service. Which kind of devotional service we want to perform. Manjari Bhava, Saki Bhava, Vatsalya Bhava, Dasya Bhava, and so on, and so on, and so on. Because this is the exchange of love. And Sukriti is helping us in many ways. Sukriti is helping us to relish our specific devotional service, for example, our Manjari Bhav, to relish it, not just only to know about that, but to relish and be engaged in that. Sukritis are helping us to remove obstacles in the heart, the more devotional Sukritis are present in the heart, 
it means that less obstacles are there. It means that obstacles are cleaned from the heart. And the best way how to receive this Sukritis is through the intimate association of Rasik devotees who will give us their own Sukritis in our heart. This is process how it works because it is exchange of love. In exchange of love we have all chain of love. It's not Radha and me. No, it doesn't work like that. It's not Krishna and me. They don't want that. They want to, they want to be surrounding but the many devotees and also newcomers like we are. And they know the only way how newcomers can overcome their bodily materialistic consciousness is to receive this deep spiritual devotional impressions in their heart. And these specific devotional impressions will melt the heart, change the heart, purify the heart, and prepare person for complete love, pure transcendent love. So we are depending on Sukritis because this is also exchange of love between Nelfi devotee and Radha Mohan. When Nelfi devotee understands, I received the love of my beloved Radhika. I received actually her love then immediately devotee's love is increasing. He cannot resist. This is the exchange of love. And we need Sukritis according to specific desire for devotional service. Because through Sukritis of perfect devotees, which they infuse in us, we can start to properly think, feel, and act according to that bhava, that relationship. If you want to become Manjari, for example, we need Manjari specific gada. It sounds strange, but specific Sukritis. Those who are on the level of Sakas, they cannot give us this kind of love. They cannot give us this kind of feelings. And they don't know how to teach us most confidential service in the mood of Manjari Bhav. So, for that reason, it is said we need Snigda, Sajatiya Sangha, those who are in the same mood. Because this is the way how it works, how this exchange of love is going on and is always increasing, increasing, and increasing. That is the reason 
why we need Socrates. Because we have so many Im materialistic impressions. How we receive these materialistic impressions? Why they are so strong in our life? Because millions of lives, we had association of materialistic persons. We have impressions in the form of materialistic identifications from millions of lives, materialistic values of millions of lives. And we need something completely different. Like Gurudev said, this is one small line, but you need to grow another line of your devotional life, which will be more stronger, more higher than this materialistic life. And for that you have to listen, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Smarana, from the mouth of pure Rasik devotees in your desirable mood. And this Bhakti Lata will slowly grow, grow and become bigger tree and put the shade on this materialistic tree. Maybe it sounds complicated, but association brings Socrates and Socrates are helping to change the heart, to purify the heart, and to be fixed in one goal. They are helping, and they are manifestation of Radharani's mercy, Radharani's love, compassion, tenderness, sweetness. We need that kind of Sukritis. Specific. We need Radhika's emotions, specific emotions. And he is, she is giving her emotions through her beloved maidservants. This is Radha Kripa. I'm sorry, King Kari, I hope that you can catch at least two, three percent. <laughs> Uh, others can explain more. This is subject for really thinking, feeling, and to be absorbed because we are always, we will be dependent. So Sukriti is something which makes us depend of love. Otherwise, we will always be without Sukriti. In other words, we will always be independent. Sukriti is nourishing our deep, real dependence and real identity. Right. So I just deeply comment, uh, deeply comment. I feel security is like a good to good to good to activity. And the best activity is serving sadhu Vaishnava. Like maybe I I explain a little bit example. So some 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 devotee um, okay, some person can. <laughs> And give to Guru Dev the everyday present something, some one fruit, or some might you know make some coffee. And then Guru Dev starts thinking, oh, who is this guy, this person? Oh, he's uh, he or she is serving me. She's giving always present to me. 
Then Guru Dev starts thinking, oh, I should give something, some mercy upon that person. So kind of through the security, that kind of favor bring us to some favor from Sadhu or maybe our Ishta Devi or Ishta Deva. So like uh, of course uh, uh Kripa is no cause. But still, if we doing something helping the devotee especially, and then kind of uh, some kind of saving uh, bhakti spirit, bhakti savings, and then that saving bring us to some favor from Vaishnava. Like uh, my I feeling that if we serve the ordinary person, then ordinary security come. This is Gauranga Sundar say this is material security. But if we serve like a yogi, like Hatha Yogi or you know Jnana Yogi, Ashta Yogi, then that kind of spirit is coming. Then if we serve by the bhakta, then we can get some kind of spirit of by the bhakti. And then but slowly, slowly this spirit brings us to more higher stage. Like this, we are experiencing this this kind of, you know, especially I'm not so much fortunate like uh, all other people because at, I, I, at first I practicing like a Buddhist okay. and then, you know, yoga, hatha yoga, and then jnana yoga, shtanga yoga, and then bhakti, bhakti. And then waste of time and finally raganuga bhakti. So, but... Uh, Gurudev is saying, actually, it seems a waste of time, but uh, it is kind of preparation. We we try to put some security, some seva. Then slowly, slowly, through this seva, some favor coming from sadhu or some good person. Then this favor brings us to another stage by the mercy of Radha Mohan. And then finally come to uh, uh, kind of, uh, you know, Swarupa Swarupa city. And that's kind of thing that I'm feeling. Yeah, Janamaji. Yes. It's very clear. So this is the reason why all Acharyas are talking that we have to be patient. Passion and patient. Because we need a time to collect enough condensed Sukritis. You know the song of Vaishnava uh, Das, who we are singing to in, in Mungir Mandir, Na, uh, Nahi Sukriti Lavalesh. I don't have any Sukritis because he knows, he's crying. I know that I'm, he's in humble way speaking, of course. But he wants to make a point, actually. I need more Sukritis, devotional, Bhakti Sukritis, not Dharmic Sukritis, Yogi Sukritis, Karmic Sukritis, and all other Sukritis. I need my specific Sukritis, but I don't have that. Nahi Sukriti Lavalesh. And I'm so unfortunate. So this is the lamentation of devotee who is not satisfied with his quantity of Sukritis. He wants more and more and more and more because this kind of Sukritis will bring him more closer to Shimatera Dharani. And I want more and I don't have anything <laughs> because this is the love and eagerness. When you are eager for something, you're never satisfied, actually. Never. And devotee is in the same mood, is lamenting. I don't have nothing. No, zero. Zero Sukritis. I am completely low person. Because he wants more and more and more and more. <laughs> Anyway, this is a... You know, for me, for me, Gauranga has so much security, honestly. 
he can he can understand more deeply and you know deeper deep understanding you know today today we are discussing with some other devotees you know, among the international international this Saturday is you know Christian you know class is 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 you know best so we are discussing like this you know because of you or you know. No, this you, is you, this no, not you're very other devotees opinion. No, 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 I'm sorry, Maharaj, but this is really don't believe him, devotees. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't want to make offense to my beloved Jayanandaji, but don't believe him, you know, it's not the truth. Okay. He's very kind. <laughs> Vaishnava, Vaishnava is very kind and he is exaggerating. <laughs> So sorry, I disturbed you. Yeah, I love you. I love you, but not because you are praising me, <laughs> because you have to critics which I need. No, I like want to steal. You, you I want to steal your Sukritis. No, I need your message. I need all all other devoted mercy. Yes. Okay. Yes, we need the mercy of each others. That's the conclusion, Siddhanta. We need, desperately, we need mercy of everyone. Everyone. Without discrimination. Of all great Vaishnavas. Radhe Radhe. Rasamayi. Uh, you can read? You fix your problem with internet? Okay. Your mic, please. How I wasted such a pure life with all kinds of external dealings. When will I cry for Swamini with a breaking heart? I am yours and no one else's. I cannot live without you, and therefore I pray to you. Oh, Devi, if you know this, then be merciful and take me to your lotus feet, making me your maidservant. My heart is always open for she, who is millions of times dearer to me than my own heart. I must surely get a response from her. To whom shall I speak of my feelings? I don't have anyone else in this world. This desire must be very strong. The activities of the Acharyas is the target. Srila Rupa Goswami cried out, O oh Radhe, O oh Krishna, the lakes of your minds are filled with nectar streams of deep compassion. Be pleased with this wicked soul. Please show me the luster of love. That is the guarantee of seeing you. Why is Rati the guarantee? Srila Vishnava Chakravarti writes that when Rati appears, the devoting's feeling of I-ness, self-identification, enters into the spiritual body, which is fit for the execution of devotional service. And it is as if he leaves his material devotee body, Sadaka Sharir, 
Please resume this sentence one more time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Srila Vishnavat Chakravarti writes that when Rati appears, the devotee's feeling of I-ness, self-identification, enters into the spiritual body, which is fit for the execution of devotional service. And it is as if he leaves his material devotee body, Sadaka Shari. So, I would like to please everyone to read this sentence and to put some endeavor in meditation about the meanings of these words of Vishwana Chakra Tikkur, because he is explaining how Swarup Siddhi is achieved. And what does it really mean, Swarup Siddhi? So first thing he is saying, Rati has to appear. Rati or Bhava level or Rati, this intoxication, attachment for Adorani, but also for own spiritual identity. And how it starts? By Guru Rati. Shri Guru Charane Rati. It starts. This madness out of love, this intoxication, this ecstatic mood. When we say ecstatic, it means madness. Ecstasy comes because of love. For Shri Guru, not ordinary Guru, Shri Guru, Charana Rati. And when Rati appears in the heart of devotee, then his heart is melting because this is the result of Hladini Shakti which is penetrating very, very intensely in the heart of Sadaka. When Hladini Shakti, Radha Skripa, very in intense way comes in the heart of the sadaka, he feels ecstasy. Desire for devotional service is increasing and increasing and increasing. In that moment, devotee can see his own swarup clearly. And Baba is saying here, I-ness, self-identification. I can see my Swarup, I can see my beloved deity, Ishtadi. I can see my Manjari Swarup, and I can see my rather run. So in that moment, shortly to say, I'm just trying to make it shortly, on that moment, this self-identification enters in a spiritual body. You know, it's merging 
it's merging. And there is no more difference between Goranga Sundara and the Manjari form for him. There is no difference between Udavaji and his Manjari form. Kinkari and her Manjari form. And so on, so on, beloved devotees. Because in that moment, devotee is completely free from materialistic conception of life and identification. And for that he needs manifestation of Hladini Shakti to pull him, you know, to pull him from bodily sadakavish directly to Sharira Dih, to Swaruplish. And this is only possible by the power of transcendental love. Then starts Vispurtis. Vivid visions of Lilas. Because why they are vivid? They are not spurtis, just short reflections, just short light. They are vivid because vivid is my vision of my identity. I know and I accept who am I. I don't resist anymore. I'm not rebellious anymore. I accept fully and I see. And because of that, we need focus on our own identity, spiritual identity, to nourish it. So this is the thing which Gurudev is teaching us. First you should realize yourself. And when you realize yourself, automatically, it goes automatically, you realize by the Kripa, your Guru Manjari, all others, your Ishtadev, and Swarup will be clear. This is the beginning stage of Prema. Jainandaji knows that, that this Bhava Rati is a middle stage actually. And for all us Sadakas, this is the goal. First goal which we have to attain. First goal. Without that, we cannot jump to Prema directly. We need first ray of Prema to attain. Because in this first ray of Prema, all bodily con consciousness is going out. And only one identity is staying. Swarupa Vesh. Taiba. Mm. So here is very nicely explained. Udavaji, please. Uh, thank you. No, this Ines, it's really simple in a way. That this Ines is the notion that we are somebody. So I look in the mirror and I say, oh, there is a bus driver. Or there is a Croatian, or there is a tennis player. All these things that we identify ourselves with in material life. And the moment that Ati comes, the moment this special kind of emotion comes, 
we look at ourselves again in the mirror and we say, wait a minute, there's something else in me. I'm something else. I'm something that's unchanging. I'm something that's not material. And then this I, the more it is attracted to the emotion, the more it becomes spiritual. And the I becomes a spiritual I. I am a lover. I am one who has fondness. I am one who melts when I hear or see this thing or that thing. And all those identities that I thought I was before, they melt away. This is what this sentence means for me. Yes, very nicely. Sim in a simple way, Udawaji explained, actually, through the example of mirror. And when devotees start see himself in the mirror, but he doesn't see his physical presence, <laughs> he sees spiritual presence in the mirror, it means that it looks that as if he leaves material body. He doesn't leave, but it looks because his consciousness is completely, his eyes are seeing completely different things. So when Acharyas are on Sadakavesh, they are still conscious, deeply conscious and identify, self-identify with their spiritual identity. When I am in Sadakavesh, I am in Maya. I am completely devoid of my spiritual identity. Why? Because I don't have realization of spiritual identity. But when they are, it's complete. They call it external consciousness. Mm. They are conscious. Even in external, in body, in body which we see, they are conscious about their Sharira Deha, Swaruplish, spiritual identity. Mm. I have to practice. I remember, I forgot. I remember, I forgot. Up and down, up and down, left and right, left and right, up and down. But their examples are my target. This and it's a change. It's like you say, it's a change of consciousness. Yeah. You're not, you're not leaving your body. You're not arriving at a new body. Your Swarup is waiting, is there, ready to go. It's already perfect. It's waiting inside you for you to clear away this feeling that you're a Croatian bus driver and realize that you're a soul. It's already perfect. It's just blocked. So we need the patient. <laughs> yes. We need the patient and confidence in those who are guiding us. Uh -huh. Rather. Uh -huh. Oh, I think that maybe we can stop here. Otherwise, it will be too long. We already said so many things actually we repeated <laughs> the words of Acharya so many very nice points and thank you very much for everything for your patience <laughs> to listen to this we try to serve our Guru Devadola Acharyas thank you Maharaji Thank you very much. Uh, in my book, 191 page is one is uh, someone is who is this? Mm, in yeah, mine, it's okay. 189. Ah, okay. Yeah, my is old version. Mm. 
my result version. So Priya, you should find these uh, words, 48, and try to underline this. I choose this commentary purposely because later on also it's very important instructions Ananta Das Babaji is giving. Mm. Very, very important. How to really have proper perspective of what we are doing and what we want to attain and how to attain. It's very nice comment. It's condensed. Radhe Radhe.